its joy and sorrow. Walked among us as the least of all, gave himself into our keeping. He is light that dawns for blinded eyes. He is hope for the despair. Welcome to Peace United Church of Christ for worship on this most sacred Monday, Thursday evening. Please join me in the call to worship. A table is set before us. A feast is prepared for us. The Lord calls us to the supper of remembrance. The Lord calls us to serve and to be served. We will never forget Christ's example. We will never forget the full extent of his love. Yeah. 
my soul to lay aside his crown for my soul. Please join me in the prayer of confession. Loving Christ, on that night long ago, you knew that your hour had come. You knew full well what lay ahead of you. Your disciples loved you and followed you, but they had also failed you. They would fail you yet again that night, and one would betray you. Yet you washed their feet as a servant would, even the feet of your betrayer. We have also loved you and followed you. We have also failed you, and we cannot comprehend the love that you show us, the love that is our example, the love that tells us to do as you have done for us. May we be like you, O Christ, servants of all. May we all see how we long to be your faithful disciples. May we all see how we can love each other just as you have loved us. In your holy name we pray. Amen. Christ offered up his life with self-giving, sacrificial love so that we would know how wide is the love the unconditional love of God. We are forgiven, so be at peace. Our first reading is the preparation for Passover from Luke chapter 22, verses 7 through 13. Then came the day of unleavened bread, on which the Passover lamb had to be sacrificed. So Jesus sent Peter and John, saying, Go and prepare the Passover meal for us so that we may eat it. They asked him, where do you want us to make preparations for it? Listen, he said to them. When you have entered the city, a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him into the house he enters and say to the owner of the house, the teacher asks you, where is the guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? He will show you a large room upstairs, already furnished. Make preparations for us there. So they went and found everything as he had told them, and they prepared the Passover meal. Luke makes that day sound so normal and organized. Hi, I'm Martha. Let me tell you the way it really went. Every evening, since the night before Jesus rode in on the donkey when all the crowd was cheering, Mary and I fed Jesus and the disciples dinner. They would go into the city early in the morning where Jesus would teach in the temple. 
and then they would return to Bethany for dinner before going to the eastern side of Mount Olive to sleep in the open air. Mary, Lazarus, and I all assumed the disciples would be joining us in Bethany for the Passover meal. I think the disciples did too. I had already soaked the beans overnight for a large soup. You should have seen the shocked look on Peter and John's faces when Jesus told them to go prepare the meal. I knew what they were thinking. That's women's work. You want us to prepare the food? They stammered out the question about where they were to go, but Jesus only gave them, gave them the answer as to who to find for a place to stay, not how to get it all prepared. Peter and John gave me the most desperate pleading look I have seen in a long time. I motioned them to follow me. I told them to go pick out my best lamb while I quickly gathered up the matzah I had already prepared, along with several bottles of choice wine and essential herbs and spices. I covered and loaded up the beans for the soup, tying it tightly to our donkey. The rest of the food I would just have to get at market in the city. We quietly but quickly descended down the two miles of the Jericho Road to Jerusalem. I think all of us were silently wondering why it was so important to Jesus to share the Passover meal in Jerusalem instead of staying in Bethany. There was so much tension in the city, none the least of which was the animosity the religious leaders were demonstrating against Jesus. Passover was supposed to be a time of celebration. Why not just stay in Bethany where we could all relax and enjoy the night? As we entered the East Gate to Jerusalem, I noticed the city was teeming with Roman soldiers. Besides that, everyone and their brother seemed to be in town for the week of Passover. It was hard to move, let alone make someone out in the crowd. And yet, there he was, right at the entrance. The man carrying a jar of water, just as Jesus said we would find him. You couldn't miss him. Men don't carry water. That's women's work, even for slaves. The man took us to his owner, who then showed us the way to the upper room. As I entered the upper room, I immediately noticed the stool at the door with a pitcher of water and a basin standing at its side. Large cushions to sit and rest upon were placed neatly around several low tables. All the baskets, bowls, and cups needed for the meal were provided. As we went back down the stairs and re-entered the courtyard to the house, I handed the lamb over to Peter and John and told them to go have it sacrificed at the temple and return with the meat. Meanwhile, I went to market to purchase dates, figs, apples, walnuts, olives, grapes, and, and eggs. I was cooking the bean soup over the fire in the courtyard when Peter and John returned. I taught them how to roast the lamb and eggs, make the haro set with apples and honey, and set the table for the evening meal. All was finished just in time for Jesus' arrival with the other disciples. I wonder now, did Jesus know I would help Peter and John all along? Our next reading are selections from John chapter 13, where Jesus washes the disciples' feet. Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands and that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table, took off his outer robe, and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was tied around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, You do not know now what I am doing, but later you will understand. Peter said to him, you will never wash my feet. Jesus answered, Unless I wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. After he had washed their feet, had put on his robe, and had returned to the table, he said to them, 
Do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for that is what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have set you an example that you should do as I have done to you. Very truly, I tell you, servants are not greater than their master, nor are messengers greater than the one who sent them. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. Very truly, I tell you, whoever receives one whom I send receives me, and whoever receives me receives him who sent me. Join me for the invitation to communion. Come to this table, all who seek to follow Christ's way. We come not because we must, but because we may. We come not because we are fulfilled, but because in our emptiness, we stand in need of God's mercy and assurance. It is spread for you and me that we might again know God has come to us and shared our common lot. Come and find Christ's presence as we partake and share. Let us pray. We give you thanks, loving creator of all heaven and earth and raising us from the dust by the breath of your spirit. We thank you for your steadfast love, even when we have rebelled and betrayed you. We remember the covenant you made with our ancestors in faith and rejoice that you continue to offer us your forgiveness, calling us into renewed relationship with you. Above all, we remember and give you thanks this evening for the gift of Jesus Christ, our Savior, who through his example of humility and love in life and upon the cross has shown us your way of truth and light. Through raising him from the dead to live in glory, you call all of us into life anew. We thank you for the presence of your Holy Spirit in your gathered church. Bless this bread and cup that we may be nourished to remain faithful in love and hope as we journey through this vigil of darkness. Comfort and sustain us until we may once again rejoice in the glory of your light. With the company of all the saints and angels in heaven, and on earth, we worship you with praise. Amen. We remember that on the night of betrayal and desertion, Jesus said, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. And Jesus took a loaf of bread, and after giving thanks, he blessed it and broke it and said, this is my body given to you. And after supper, he took the cup, and as he poured it, he says, this is my blood in the covenant poured out for you. When you eat of this bread and you drink of this cup, do so in remembrance of me. The body of Christ, the bread of life, take and eat. the cup of salvation, the cup of blessing, 
take and drink. Please join me in the prayer of thanksgiving. Almighty God, we give you thanks for the gift of our Savior's presence in the simplicity and splendor of this holy meal. Unite us with all who are fed by Christ's body and blood that we may faithfully proclaim the good news of your love and that your universal church may be a rainbow of hope in an uncertain world. Hear us now as we pray the prayer Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, taught us to say. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. In remembrance of God's amazing love for us, let us present our offerings to God.
a reading on the betrayal of Jesus with selections from John chapter 13. After saying this, Jesus was troubled in spirit and declared, Very truly I tell you, one of you will betray me. The disciples looked at one another, uncertain of whom he was speaking. One of his disciples, the one whom Jesus loved, was reclining next to him. Simon Peter, therefore, motioned to him to ask Jesus of whom he was speaking. So, while reclining next to Jesus, he asked him, Lord, who is it? Jesus answered, It is the one to whom I give this piece of bread when I have dipped it in the dish. So when he had dipped the piece of bread, he gave it to Judas, son of Simon Iscariot. After he received the piece of bread, Satan entered into him. Jesus said to him, Do quickly what you are going to do. When he had gone out, Jesus said, I give you a new commandment, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. How did he know? How did he know I was going to lead the chief priest to him? Why didn't he stop me? Why did he tell me to go and do when he knew what I was planning to do? If Jesus knew my plan, then certainly he must have known even better than I what they would do to him. Oh, the look on his face. Jesus looked so hurt and pained when I left. Why did I do it? It was so mixed up. There was that expensive perfume Mary poured on Jesus' feet. The strong, musky odor filled the entire room. That perfume was worth a whole year's wages. And Jesus defended her. My love for Jesus was because he cared so much for the poor. Had he changed without me even realizing it? Why did he take Mary's side instead of mine? Think of how many people we could have helped. And then there was that other thought stirring in my mind. It was time for Jesus to take power. This was the week with everyone in the city for Passover. Isn't Passover all about our liberation, our freedom? Did you see the crowd cheering for him when they entered on the donkey? Surely they would fight with him against the Romans. Maybe part of me just wanted to force Jesus' hand. But no, Jesus shows no resistance at all. All of this for 30 pieces of silver. Blood money. They are going to condemn Jesus. How could I betray him? I shared his last meal with him. How do I live with myself? Oh, how I wish Jesus had stopped me. The foretelling of Peter's denial from Matthew chapter 26, verses 31 through 35. Then Jesus said to them, You will all become deserters because of me this night, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd, and the sheep of the flock will be scattered. But after I am raised up, I will go ahead of you to Galilee, Peter said to him, Though all become deserters of you, I will never desert you. Jesus said to him, Truly, I tell you, this very night, before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. Peter said to him, Even though I must die with you, I will not deny you. And so said all the disciples. Hi, my name is Peter. Today started out normal enough. John and I were sent to the city to prepare for the Passover meal. We found the upper room just as Jesus described, and then was then we took Martha's lamb to the temple to be slaughtered. Time flew getting everything ready. When Jesus and the other disciples arrived, we 
we reclined on the plush cushions provided by the owner. Looking back, I realized there was something about Jesus' mood that was rather subdued, more so than usual from the start. But I ignored it. At the time, it was the Passover, a time for celebration. Then Jesus did something that shocked us all. He got up from the table, took up a water pitcher, basin, and towel, and began to wash John's feet. You should have seen the stunned look, confused look on John's face, all of our faces, in fact. When Jesus next came to me, I could not take it. Jesus was no servant. I told him, you shall never wash my feet. But then he said, if I didn't let him wash my feet, I would have no share with him. What? That was unthinkable. Jesus is everything to me. So I told him to wash my hands and my head too. Okay, so I went a little overboard, but that's how much I love him. Jesus was taking on this on a lowly position, elevating me, and yet I am the one who felt vulnerable as he gently washed my feet. It was as if all of his love was pouring into the water that bathed my feet, coursing through my veins straight to my heart. Jesus told us that no person is greater than another and that we are to serve others as he has served us. We regrouped around the table, enjoyed the meal, we prepared when Jesus grew serious. There was a sudden hush in the room. Jesus took bread and broke it and gave it to us, passed the cup around. He said when we eat the bread and drink from the cup, we should do this remembering him. We didn't understand what he was saying, but we listened intently. Then he said one of us would betray him and that all of us would desert him tonight. I swore my total allegiance to Jesus. I said I would never deny him, even if I must die with him. Where'd that thought come from? Was it the times he talked about his dying and rising? In the moment, I didn't realize the seriousness, seriousness of what I was saying. Jesus said that before the cock crowed, I would deny him three times. Impossible, I thought. That is until the Roman soldiers came to arrest him. Fear entered my heart and cowardice my veins. Oh, the anguish I feel now. My Galilean accent gave me away, and three times I was accosted as one who followed Jesus. They displayed pure hatred toward me, pointing their fingers and shouting at me. I denied Jesus each time. I emphatically said, I do not know the man. And then the cock crowed. How did Jesus know? I fled, afraid for my life, I deserted Jesus. Oh God, please forgive me. Sit here while I pray. I am grieved even to death. Remain here and stay awake with me. My Father, 
if it is possible, let this cup pass from me, yet not what I want, but what you want. Stay with me, remain here with me, watch and pray, watch and pray. In silent prayer, tell God what it is you most fear. So, you could not stay awake with me for one hour. My father, if this cannot pass until I drink it, your will be done. Stay. In silent prayer, share with God what you wish God would remove from your life. Stay awake and pray that you may not come into this time of trial. For the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Father, if you are willing, remove the cup from me, yet not my, but your will be done. In silent prayer, release what you will for your life to God's will for you. Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? Enough. The hour has come. The Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners, and the betrayer is at hand. A reading on the arrest of Jesus from Mark chapter 14, verses 43 through 50. Immediately while he was speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived. And with him there was a crowd with swords and clubs from the chief priests the scribes, and the elders. Now the betrayer had given them a sign, saying, The one I will kiss is the man. Arrest him and lead him away under guard. So when he came, he went up to him at once and said, Rabbi, and kissed him. Then they laid hands on him and arrested him. But one of those who stood near drew his sword and struck the slave of the high priest 
cutting off his ear. Then Jesus said to him, Have you come out with swords and clubs to arrest me, as though I were a bandit? Day after day I was with you in the temple teaching, and you did not arrest me. But let the scriptures be fulfilled. All of them deserted and fled. They've arrested my son. Why? Oh, why? Do they not know who he is? Jesus is God's beloved son. Oh, God, I do not understand. My son is all goodness and light, all truth, mercy, compassion, and love. Why do they hate him so much? Why do they fear him? Oh, in my heart of hearts, I knew this week that something terrible was going to happen. A mother knows. It started when they told him to silence the crowd. It got worse when Jesus turned the tables over at the temple. The chief priests and the leaders, they kept testing Jesus. You could see the sneers in their faces. Oh, Jesus, my son, my son, what will happen now? It was that old man, Simeon, who said, when we presented Jesus at the temple, when he was still a babe in my arms. He said Jesus was a life for revelation to the Gentiles and for glory to God's people, Israel. And then he told me my child would be oppressed and a sword would pierce my heart too. Is this time what Simeon was talking about? I tremble with fear for my son, and my heart is full of sorrow. Oh, my son, what will they do to you? I have to go. I must find out where they have taken him. Fire.